Hey everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Welcome. Thanks for coming aboard. Hey, you want to find a, um, want to watch an easy way to make journal covers that are covered in fabric when you're not starting with a book, but you've got some maybe beautiful, you came across a uh, boatload of upholstery fabric and you just want to make some journals out of it. You can also use this method if you're using other kinds of fabrics or uh, this also works well if, um, You've got clothing that you're cutting up and you want to use it to cover journals. Uh, this is a um, this is how I'm doing it. So I thought I would film this. Um, now, um, these I was making for a bundle and I believe at the time of this video's launch, the bundle will hopefully have already been sold. And then for anybody who really wanted one but missed out, I wanted to show you my process so that if you want to make them at home, you can make them at home. Hey, hey, I want, I want to share my ideas with you guys. So there's a million and one ways to make journals this is just one okay so here we go so i got a bunch of these here this is what they're basically going to look like as far as the covers go uh, but i'll give you some tips on covers and i'll give you some tips on papers that go in them and um, this may help because you may run into this occasionally okay so what i did was um i took a piece of fabric Non-stretchy fabric works best, but you can use stretchy fabric if you're careful and you glue well, or if you want to put down heat and bond on your fabric and then use your fabric. Um, but you don't want to sew over heat and bond, so scrap that idea completely. Okay, there you go. Just stick to non-stretchy fabric. It'll be much easier for you. Okay, Oop, let me move my light and this light over here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so what I did was I took a piece of upholstery fabric. Now this came in these big squares, so I was trying to um, use something that used the size of these squares. So I, what I did was I took everything. I basically broke into my own storehouse here, which is also known as my craft room. And I grabbed everything that looked like hard cardboard. So we're talking about the backs of paper pads. I actually had purchased some chipboard, which is so expensive to buy if you buy it separately. I mean, it's just like there's chipboard everywhere in our lives. Do we really need to buy it? Um, where you can find chipboard, cereal boxes, um, cardboard, uh, sometimes direct mail or packaging. A lot of packaging is chipboard. So keep an eye out for it. Basically it's dense cardboard. I would call it the plywood of cardboard. Yeah. Okay. And use whatever thickness you feel, um, is appropriate. Now, um, if you're using a thicker fabric, just take that into account because you want to think about how wide your spine is going to be because you don't want things to close. You don't want to put them like butt to butt like that because you're going to have no room to put any papers in. So keep a little bit of space. And um, what that space is, is entirely up to you. That depends on how fat you want to make your book. Just know that whatever you're looking at, let's say it's an inch, by the time you fold in, it's going to be smaller. And when you put your papers in there, um, it's going to make it even smaller. So just make sure that you leave enough room. I would say an inch is a good place to start. Um, so what I did was I cut actually these. I don't know if you can see it. If your chipboard isn't thick enough, double them up. That's that's what I did with this one. Let me see if you can see better. Can you see? It's glued together. Yep. So I just uh, I cut these on my guillotine cutter. That was the easiest way for me to do it. It does take some muscle strength. Um, you could do craft knife, um, but it'll it'll take longer and it'll exhaust you <laughs> in the long run. So the guillotine cutter was the uh, most efficient way for me to cut this chipboard. That's probably the hardest part of this is cutting the uh, the chipboard. Now, the good news is you can buy some chipboard in certain sizes. So if you don't want to do any of the cutting, you can just go ahead and um, buy pre-cut chipboard already like nine by six or whatever, whatever you want. It comes in many different sizes. So take a look on Amazon or eBay or Etsy. You're going to find it there. It's a, maybe the variety and sizes are harder to find in the Hobby Lobbies and Michaels. I don't, I, but I would definitely, I definitely know you can buy it online. All right. So what I did, this is, oh, that's my alarm. Okay. Um, this is Fabrifix glue and, um, uh, I'm going to use Fabrifix because this is a clear silicone glue, fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. No, I'm not sponsored. I just love the glue. So I try and tell you honestly what I like to use. And, um, this is one I just really like to use. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of guesstimating there what I want to do, but the, the process is, um, you, you want to know how big mine are? Okay, it doesn't matter because yours could be different. So my actual cardboard is like five and almost a half. Um, 
But then because we're going to we're going to be sewing these in, but we're not going to sew through the cardboard. We're going to sew just through the fabric edge around the, the, the side. So it's going to be an easy sew. Your, your needle doesn't have to struggle to go through this. Um, and I'll show you how to do it with the fewest cuts of material. Okay, so you get one. Now this particular upholstery thread already has um, a finished edge, but if it didn't, just come along and like cut out a piece with pinking shears. That will help un, uh, the unraveling. But we're going to sew it all together with a zigzag stitch and that should hopefully seal the edges. Okay, that's my theory. All right, here we go. So the next thing is I, I glued those down, put those in place. And then I'm going to glue, let me back up a little so you can see what's going on. Oop. One, two, three, boop. There we go. Okay, so now you just want to glue these down. I do the X. Oh, not now. Not now. Yes, now. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> All right, this is Fabrifix. If you've never seen it, I am just going to use the regular bottle. The, the reason why I switch bottles into the Sugar Bells Icing Piping Bottle because I get a thinner stream of glue because this kind of comes out a little thick and fast for me. But it's what we got right now, so we're rolling with it. Okay. Now you can do finger smoosh here if you have a thin fabric, but this is a thick fabric, so I'm not going to worry about that. A thick, dense, dark colored fabric. Okay. So here's the deal. We flip it. Okay. We align the edge so we know that we are in alignment. We smoosh. And then we, we take our thumbs and we're looking for where the cardboard is and we push. We're pushing that way. So we take it all the way to the bottom and that's going to give us a nice flush end there. Okay. So now to cut it, what we do is I follow, um, I follow this line here all the way, all the way. So I'm grabbing my pinking shears. Oops, got strings everywhere. Um, give you more view. And I'm just going to follow that. I'm just going to be right at it, not beyond it, but right at it. And that, uh, and then you can always trim it up a little bit if, if you have, uh, if you didn't go straight or something, which I really do. But following this line does help a lot. Can you see that? I'm just following it. And if you have one of those rotary um, fabric things, you can use that. Pink, they have pinking rotary things too. If you want to use that, that would make it easier. Okay, here we go. And I'm just going to cut that off the edge. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that piece anymore. That piece is gone and we'll use it for other things another day. Okay, so here's a trick. Now this side is going to be easy to sew together, but this side always thwarted me. How am I going to know where my cardboard ends? Well, this is what I do to make it very easy. I, I take a ruler and I come along until I fall off the edge of the cardboard. Let me zoom you a little bit. I come along until I fall off the edge of the cardboard, snug it in there. Then I take my fingers as a spacer and I equidistant space. Like I use the same fingers up and down, up and down, up and down. And I make maybe a good quarter of an inch there. Um, a little more is better than a little less. And then I take a pen or marker or chalk or whatever you want to use to make some sort of line here that I can see something, a marker, if you have a hard time seeing the line. Now I have a line. Now I know where to cut. So if this is super thick material, you can cut one at, um, at a time or you can uh, cut them both at the same time. Let me try both. Sometimes I get lucky and it's not too bad. If it, if it is, I just back off. This one's not too bad. Um, but if it's real thick, I'll have to do one at a time. I just follow my line. And it's okay if you cut right on the line and some of your ink is showing because you're going to sew over it. So it kind of covers it up. But if, you can use chalk if you don't want anything to show. Okay. All right. So now we have this. Yes. And uh, okay. We back up. Boop. Boop. Nope. You didn't back up. Back up. Okay. There we go. So now we're going to pull in our big gun known as the sewing machine. Okay. There we go. And now I'm going, I'm going to show you exactly what I do. Um, I'm th like I said, there's a million and one ways to do this, but this is, this is what I do. Now, I am not a professional sewer. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm learning as I go. Feel free to toss in uh, tips and tricks. Uh, yes, I, I don't know if you can see, but I do have a metal bobbin in my brother, which is a no-no, but it's there and I had the color match, so there we go. And um, I'm using a number four stitch, which is a zigzag, and I'm going on the widest, I mean the longest stitch, okay? And I am going, I'm just sewing through the fabric and I am going to go back and forth to lock it. So here we go. It doesn't take very long if all goes well. Okay, get it going a little bit, then go backwards, lock that in. And then uh, use the middle mark on your foot 
to go over the edge to make sure that you get everything. Oh, my papers are falling off. Hang on. Ah, ah. I tried to keep a clean zone here. What happened to your clean zone, Missy? I got distracted. Okay, apparently that's my inner voice now, my subconscious talking. Okay, here we go. And we're back over here. Let me put you back up on. You need to go there. Okay, there we go. And now we turn. And we're just sewing where um, there's maybe a quarter of an inch hangover, so it's easy to sew. No big deal. No big hoo ha. No big hey, what you fall. Everything's running smoothly, even with a silver, even with a silver metal bobbin. We're going. Sometimes it doesn't work well, but sometimes it does. So sometimes you just gotta try it. <laughs> okay, no more sewing. No more singing. No. Oh. <laughs> All right, coming down the mountain here. And I'm not going to go along the bottom because it's already sealed because I folded the material over. But you can go ahead if you want that finished sewn edge all the way around. Go for it. But I think it looks fine the way it is. All right. Cut that. And then uh, move that back. Oh, where are you going? Where are you going? Come on. Come back, back over here. Okay, here. All right. <laughs> oh, totally stuck on my, uh, my stuff here. Okay, hang on. There. We have this. Now I'm just going to cut off the threads, the corner. I'm assessing to make sure that I got that well. And if I didn't get that well, for some reason, I can always go back in and do another one, which I have done. Um, and um, I think this one is okay. You might want to just check the little threadies to make sure that like not too many come off. You might get a little bit. Okay, so the concept about this one is that um, when you fold it in half, you can you see which way you look at it. Now we didn't do anything with the spine. Did you notice that? There's no spine. It's a, what I call a soft spine. And we are gonna actually punch holes or to do our three hole pamphlet stitch right through the material. You don't really need a spine. You've got a very strong cover in the front and this is gonna be a one signature. Um, you could do multiple signatures if you have a wider spine area. But um, it's actually kind of a cool, it's like a cross between a soft squishy and a hard cover book. Um, I think the, um, the soft spine lends itself to uh, fabric for some reason, especially the thicker fabric. So if you're working with thicker fabrics, kind of think about that as a possibility for yourself. Okay, so now let's uh, go ahead and um, I want to show you some tips on doing the pages. Now, this, ran, this is what I ran into. If you measured well, and your pages are, let's say, you know, you live in a, a wonderfully perfect world and everything is fabulous. And you could take an eight and a half by 11 paper, which is the, like, this is like the, the joy of junk journal or journal makers. And you fold it in half and you end up with five and a half wide. Then that would have been perfect. Okay. But mine is a little bit wider than that. So a couple things I can do, and I just wanted to show you options or tell you about options. I'm going to, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do, but this is, if you're short, okay, if there's not a lot, lot long enough here, you have a couple options. What you can do is number one, you can just fold all your pages in half and make it easy on yourself. And then you can take those strips that we have from uh, leftover cuttings and you can actually glue or sew them on to the edge. Okay, as an option to extend your pages, so you can extend all your pages. It's very laborious, but it is um, an option. Plus, it gives a nice look if you want different colors, and um, it almost looks like a collage effect. So it's very beautiful, and even if you do it on some pages, it's very pretty. Another option is instead of measuring, um, measure how long you how wide you want it to be okay so this is how wide i want it to be if in a perfect world okay so i want it to be there with just a little extra on the end see that so what i did was i took this clump and so i figured out how long that was that i want it to be so then i turned this over and i i laid it down on my craft mat and then i came along with my ruler and one of these deals um i guess it's a scorer or an embossing tool but um uh, you could probably do the same with um the end of your bone folder but something so that you can align it to exactly where you want it and you come in here and you you do this a little bit to give a crease okay or you do this and then you take that and you go like okay oh, it's see so well 
And then you take this and you go like that. And then magically, all these are going to be the right length, but you end up with a shorty on the other side. Now, shorties can work to your advantage. Um, what you can do if, as you're loading your journal, um, you can take pages and you can rotate them. So you have one longy, one shorty, one longy, one, and then come in with a shorty. Okay, so you're going to have some variety as the person goes through the book. They're going to see different page lengths. Or let's say you get a bunch in there and you don't like the shorties. Well, now you can come in and you can add your um, extra piece to extend. You can add lace to extend. You can add um, paper to extend. You can glue the paper on. You can sew the paper on. And uh, those are options that you can do. And um, here's one other thing. If you don't want to fuss with any of that, um, do do do. I know explaining isn't good as showing, right? I know, I know, I hear you, I hear you. Um, let's say, here you are back with this guy, you, you folded all your papers in half and you're like, oh my God, this came out wider than I thought because I didn't take into account that little extra piece of material on the edge, blah, 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 blah. Okay, um, what you can do is page tabs. That's right, and it will look very nice and neat and completely planned, yes. Okay, so you open it up and all your pages are in here, but they don't quite come out far enough. You can put page tabs that will take up certain, uh, this a visual area and it will look as if you had planned it all that way, okay? And it's also a nice way to do it if you wanna keep your page tabs completely inside of your book. Um, it's a nice way to hide the page tabs. Another thing you can do is um, take a pa little piece of material. You can also do a little ruffle with material or uh, paper along here, glue it along there to extend. Another thing you can put along here is a little, um, you could put a pencil or a pen holder right here. You'd have to have a shorter pencil, of course, but um, would fill up this spot as well if you run into that trouble. So you could have something like that imagine here, here, this is a shorter pencil. Okay. So that would be there. You could put a little uh, loop or something or a little pocket. You could slide it into something like that. So a couple of ways around if your book is ending up wider than your paper. So I just wanted to share that with you. So let's see if we can um, get some papers going here. Hold on. Okay. So this is my avocado dyed paper, which I think I'm going to use as the first page. Um, and I've gone ahead and I've made it the six inches with the fold. I didn't have quite 20 here, so I have to do a few more. And where did that pile go? Is it here? Here? Here it is. Okay, so I'll do this one with you. And, um, and if you didn't see the completed ones, um, then uh, the completed uh, bundle journal set, I'll, I'll put, link the video below if you want to just look at to see what they look like when they're completely decorated and everything. But I'm just going to show you the basic construction here. Okay, so... Can put this here, square it up on the craft mat. You can over one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's this line. So I'm putting my ruler here, this line and this line. Okay, that's what I'm lining up. Then I'm going to take this little gizmo. I think it's an embossing tool or um, a scorer. If you have a scoreboard, you can do this on a scoreboard. And then take that, do this. And, and if you're really fancy town, you can take your uh, bone folder and you come in here and push, push, push it against there. It gives a nice crisp, but you, you know, honestly, once it's folded, it's folded and you can just sort of go with it. Align your papers at the top and on the bottom and then start from the center, squish out, squish out. There we go. Very handy tool if you had to invest in anything with paper crafting, I'd get a bone folder. I just love these things. Um, okay, so now we have... Uh, 20. Okay, we have enough of those. So basically, that's one page in your journal. Okay, now I, I'm making 20 of these. So we are going to see uh, Well, at least I mean, I'm hoping I'm making 20 of these. So let me go and do a bunch of folds. I'm, I want to see exactly how many pages I can fit in this journal. Okay, this time I'm going to use some um, just pretty paper. It's copy weight. Um, I'm not going to put super thick pages in this journal because the journal itself is not that thick. So I want to have like thinner pages. Um, so I think this will work well. Maybe I'll put them this way. Yeah. Okay. So going for my six, aligning on that side. Oh, can't see. 
aligning along the side one two three four five six just repeating this process so you can see make sure one two three four five six I'm the worst counter okay here here I'll try with the bone folder this time so you can see this does work it's a good scorer fold fold and come along with the bone folder and get extra creases if you want but it, it gives you a, a good general fold and that's really what you want to get started is your good general fold and then we fold over checking the tops and the bottoms that they're aligned before you do your final squash okay okay can you see yep okay so, I, so am i on my fold i'm on my fold okay and we go north and we go south and that gives us nice crisp thing now now notice the push out okay so remember if you're gonna this is 20 pages this is important to know um whoop, where's the one we're working on here it is okay so let's say i put 20 pages in here there's going to be some smoosh that way okay now it doesn't matter because the shorties it won't matter if they translate that way and they translate that way because of the if you've never seen this but the build up here because of the thickness here they build up and stack on top of each other pushes the inner ones right if you're looking with the spine on the left okay um, so um, just kind of know that and then check check to me always check because you never know you know um, that you're going to have enough. So that's actually 20, 20 pages right in there. That's, that's a lot of pages already. We can, we can definitely do more pages than that. So we're going to do more than 20 pages. Okay. So, all right, here we go. Here I have some fancy uh, writing paper, the South, what is it called? South something. Let's go ahead and read it. South, South, this is hard to say. South Worth. Yeah. South Worth paper. It's, uh, 100% cotton something. Okay, but anyway, that's what it is. Let's get 20. Okay, I'm going to get 20. Hang on. Okay, I've counted off. The only reason I'm counting off 20 is because I'm making 20 journals. So if you're only making one journal, if you want to put all the same paper in, you could totally do it like this and maybe do 20 to 40. Let's, let's uh, see exactly how this one goes. Now, this is a little bit thicker paper. Okay, so I'm aligning, uh, counting one, two, three, four, five, six, because that's how wide I want mine to stick out, or my pages to be. Okay, use this guy again. Now with these, you don't want to push so hard that you pierce the paper. And the fatter the end, the less chance of that happening. So kind of know that. Okay, old, that's a lot of paper. I could probably split that in half to get a nicer crease, but let's see what happens. Okay, aligning the top and the bottom so everybody's aligned. And where's our fold? This might be too thick. It's too thick. Okay, Pam, you're just gonna have to do ten at a time because it's too thick. Okay, we're not gonna we're not gonna we're not gonna cheat totally cheat. It's not cheating. It's just trying to be efficient. Okay, here we go. Ready? Fold. Aligning the top and the bottom, knowing where the fold is, and then north and south. There you go. Okay, so. Just let me do this other chunk. And then we will put 40 in and see how much our little one inch spine will handle. I don't mind a little bit of a um, gator. <laughs> I don't mind a little bit of a gator mouth, but um, it depends the style you're making. If you want your book to lay flat, you might want to test to see how many pages will go in there and how bumpy your pages are. Um, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six. If you have a lot of coffee dyed pages or avocado dyed pages those are a little thicker because the paper has swelled from the treatment and it's a little bit um hilly and rumpled now you can iron it or flatten it under weights and stuff like that and that will get a give you a flatter paper um but uh, if you like that kind of rumply crunchy sort of feel it, then don't you don't have to do that that's that's not an absolute it's just a, a style choice and we love choices we love variety um and i i encourage you to try them all i mean like if you find one you know thing and you love it go for it but don't exclude learning the other methods because you may fall in love with another method and this has happened to me so many times i cannot tell you i'm thinking oh i like this way i do it this way all the time i'm not changing go away all you other ideas and then i try one and i'm like oh my god i wish i would have thought done this before this is awesome yeah 
So uh, keep your possibilities open for yourself. All right. So now actually in this particular journal, okay. I could do two signatures in there. There could be two that will fit, but I might do one. And if I did one, I want to know what, how fat it's going to feel. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to look for the center. I'm going to tuck this one inside. And that's giving me super fat mama of 40, 40 pages front and back. So 40 times four is 160, 160 pages in this little journal. Okay. Now what you have to take into account is, can I punch those holes at the same time? And it might be a little tricky. I mean, I know 20 can be done, but I don't know about 40. That might be a lot. So we may be better off doing two different signatures if your spine gives you the room for that. And I think that we have enough room to do that. So I'm thinking let's do two signatures. I don't know if these will all accommodate two signatures. Yeah, that one will. I'm going to have to check all my, my little things to make sure I have enough room to do two. So yep, enough there. Um, I would say an inch will give you plenty of room to do two signatures of 20 pages with no decorating on them. Just a, like a ballpark figure there. Okay, so let's go ahead and place some of these. Now, we could do, you can mix all the pages up, which is one thing, or you could do sections, like maybe this particular journal would have the black and white and the cream. And maybe I could intersplace them. That could be something I could do too. Um, hang on. Okay, so let's say I just grabbed some tea dyed paper and I went ahead and did the same process and I have 20 pages here. See how they're much more fat? Um, look at the difference. I mean, yeah, I mean you can definitely see where the bulk uh, changes. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. Um, what I need to do is cut them to height uh, so that they're all the same height and okay that's how tall we want them. Well let's see you can just use the grand like how tall is our entire booklet. It's going to be about five and three quarters so um, five and a half would be good. Okay, so let's measure five and a half. Okay. That is here. Okay. So now what you want to do is cut all your pages to the same height. And you can actually, um, let's say I'm going to cut my avocado dyed papers at the same time. Okay. I want to do them all at once because I'm crazy. All right. And you don't have to do them all at once. You can cut each page individually, do whatever um, you're most comfortable with. But if you want to make a bunch of journals at the same time, sometimes cutting them all at the same time, it, also, it makes sure that they're the same size, but also um, it can be a little bit faster. But sometimes faster is not always better. No, no, no. It's not about always just being faster. Okay, so we have that. I'm moving my paper clips down so they're not in the way of my ruler. We get a different ruler. Okay, here we go. Got a metal ruler. Okay, I'm going to turn it face down. Have them flush there. Let it get you organized. Flush your roo. One, two, three, four, five and a half is there. Measuring that dot. Now lining up that dot to that dot. Now holding that down firmly using a craft knife, going slow. I'm cutting through a lot at once. Sharp. A craft knife is best. Okay. You can also cut with, on your guillotine, but you can't cut this many all at once with the guillotine. It'll choke, or at least mine will. So if I have to do a lot. So first section through, not quite. Try not to move your ruler. It's very important. Okay. Now you could put the, uh, okay, I've got the first block off. Uh, cork side down, but if I want to get really close and sharp, to go very slowly. Don't cut your fingers off. Um, okay. 
There, we are through. So, I mean, a little cutting, it takes a little bit, right? Right, yep, but you're there. And now we take this off and we have two sections. Okay, now what I'm going to do is um, I am going to go reverse these back and forth because I think I like that look. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one this way and then turn it around so I have a shorty. So this is what my, see, see the shorty? Okay, longy, shorty, okay, longy, shorty, longy, shorty, longy, shorty, longy, shorty, longy, shorty. Longy, shorty, longy, shorty, longy, shorty. Okay, there we go. All right, so now I'm gonna align all the spines. That's gonna tell me, tell me where its center is again. Okay, so now I have a little booklet and it's always helpful to do one of these. Whack them all, whack them all down into the center. Align the tops. Redo your fold. Okay, there we go. Oh, yep, see, I pushed too hard. Do you see how that, that happens? That, and now, if that happens, um, I, I got a hole in my paper. I got a hole in my bucket. Dear Liza, dear Liza. Um, I would recommend taking some washi tape. This is how we fix it. Uh -huh. Oop, now, if your washi tape does this stuff, Go stick it in the microwave for a very short burst, like a second or two, a second or two, a second or two. Once you know your microwave and how long you can reheat the glue, you'll find that it, it works a lot better. Um, it's a way to save your, what you thought was old washi tape, which actually uh, is not bad. Okay, so get shorter than your page. That's actually pretty. And if you're unsure at all about the, your glue and you don't trust it, just run Run, don't run away. No, don't running away. Now just run some uh, uh, Scotch Create glue stick. Also not sponsored, but love the glue. Um, down it or some other glue. So you have a little bit of uh, um, extra reinforcement there. There you go. It actually looks very pretty on the page. It's a nice uh, decor, but it also um, reinforces your page. So if you're working with brittle pages, that's something that you can do. Okay, just all sorts of ideas here. All sorts of ideas. Okay, here we go. Now, I don't actually know what order I'm going to put. The, okay, look, now, now this is all like mega mouth, right? Um, now, if I mixed these, if I mixed these in there, it wouldn't be as mega mouth. It's not going to be that mega mouth once it closes. See, it's not, it's not so bad. So this is 20 pages, but now, Here's my second signature. So I'm going to go ahead and do the front and back on all of this. So front, hang on. Okay, I'm almost done. I'm just showing you now. Long, just so you can see again, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long. Okay, so there we go. So we have that again. We're aligning again with our little spine down there. You can do the whack-a-mole. Get them all down there. There. And then re-crease. Okay, so now we have 40 pages total. Okay, and they're all the same height and everybody's playing nicely. Um, there's a little bit of extension at the end. Let's see how that fits because that's usually the next thing that comes up. Does it all fit? We are in. And now remember, because we're, we're going to sew it flush against that spine, it's going to translate inside a little bit more to the left as we sew it in. So it's going to be, it's going to be perfect. We got it perfect. It's all tucked inside and everybody's happy pants. Okay, so let's go ahead. And now this is the important part. You want to decide which is going to be the front cover of your journal. And with these kinds of fabric journals, you have some choices in life. Yes, you can see where's the pretty design. Here's a nice flower. Uh, maybe I want to have that be the front. 
Uh, maybe there's a pucker or a wrinkle or something and that would be better inside. So you want to maybe put that the nice side on the outside or maybe there's a mark or something and you want to um, uh, leave the outside plain. So you want to put the nice side on the outside. So I think I'm going to go with this. Now, um, let's get old, our old friend, Crocodile 2 Big Bite. And I mean, you can cut the holes any way you like, but uh, I think I'm going to use this and I think I'm going to use a black marker so I can see the holes. Okay, that was, that was causing shadow. Okay, I hear the long guy outside. What's a strange day for long guy? Okay, that's all right. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to put, uh, we're going to go for uh, a three hole pamphlet stitch. So I'm going to go two, I'm about a quarter of an inch inside, quarter of an inch inside, equidistant, about halfway, quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch, and then all the way about maybe half an inch from the bottom, quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch. Now remember, this is only material down here. And if you use super thin material, then I would put a spine. But if you're using a thicker material, that's perfectly fine to be your spine. Um, and we're going, we're doing a soft spine, soft spine. Here we go. Okay. So now I'm going to take the big hole, which is meep, meep, all the way to the right, three sixteenths. See that? Not the middle one, one eighth, not this one. Wait, wait, wait. do I want the one eighth? Yes. Erase what I just said. Go to the middle one. We want the middle one, one eighth. We're doing the small hole. So it's going to be this guy. See that guy? Not, I'm going to show you the, the 3 16th. No, not that. That's the big one. Don't want that. Don't need that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Can't see what I'm doing here. Okay, go. The middle one is the one we want. The small one. Okay, that's what we want. Okay, so let's go ahead and punch these. I'm punching right on the black. Oh, sorry. I'm punching right on the black dot. Okay. So I'm sitting from the side and I'm looking from the side because that's the best angle I can get. Hmm, shadow here. Okay. So now here's a little trick. If you, if you didn't know this one, um, if you cannot see your dots <laughs> because your black dot went, uh, onto a dark fabric and you've got a shadow like what I'm dealing with, then I'm going to get, take this uh, white uh, jelly roll pen. I hope this still works. Uh, let's see. I'm going to make a white dot. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. That's not working very well in this material. So instead I'm going to try this paint white pen Sharpie. Try this. See if this works and I can get a white dot. I can see where to punch. You can also use chalk. This is coming a little bit. I can see where the dot is. Okay. Start to see it. Um, yeah, actually chalk might be the best on this material. You kind of just got to figure out what you're working with and go for it with that. All right. I'll show you what I got. Yeah, not the greatest, not the greatest worked better in my mind. Okay. But those are options <laughs> that apparently I don't have. Okay. So let's try this again. Let's see if I can see the hole. Okay. I, I, can you see? All right. Let me, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Give you the best angle I can checking to make my, make sure my little hole puncher goes over the dot, go right over the dot. Got like test a few times my over the dot. Okay. Now going here. Over the dot. Okay. And then over that. Okay. Turning it around. Okay. I can't see my dots. Okay. There's a dot. Uh, there's a dot. <laughs> I can't see the dots. Help me. Okay. I can see them when they're right here. It's just, I have no light here. That's the pro okay. You know what? I'm just going to move this light over. I think that's it. There we go. Now I can see my dots. Uh, no stopping me now. I can see my dots. Yay. Can you see my dots? I don't know if you can see my dots, but you can see them now. So yeah, sometimes you have to move a light. How about that? Okay. That's what we do. Yeah. Can't see the dot. Bring the light to the dot. Okay. And down. Okay. So now reassess. What is your front cover? That's not it. 
there's my little flower. And let's say you have a pattern page that uh, doesn't denote what is your front to back. I think I need to sew this a little better. Um, I would recommend putting a paper clip. So you always know what is your front cover. That way you're not running around going, oh my God, what's in my front cover? I don't, I don't know, right? Okay, so um, with this little guy, I am going to go in here and I am just going to run down this because I apparently missed a little spot there and we're not going to have that. No, nope. I'm going to go back in there and sew it again. That's right. Here we go. And do it still on. You're on the wide. And we're down. I've got my tails in the back and I'm zigzagging, going slow. Making sure I'm on the material. Where I went, nobody knows. I was probably, I was probably talking to you guys. Yep, I should have went back in front to lock it. I didn't. I should have done that. Um, but I'm already locked at the top there with the other one, so it should be okay. But I'm just locking this in to be sure. And now we're trimming. Get a pair of scissors. Okay, here we go. Yeah. And just trim that flush. And trim that oh, flush. Okay. And we are good. Yes, we are all sewn in there. Nobody is coming. And I will trim all these. You can leave them long and, and uh, hairy, or you can come back and, and trim the loosey gooseys. Totally up to you. Okay, so this is my front. Okay, well, I'm gonna move my light. Okay, and here we are. Okay, so now let's see if about getting these guys in. Let's see, now I want a long page first. So this is what it looks like. Okay, so I mean, I think that is fine. There's plenty of writing room and that type of thing for the crosshat, like the long, short, long, short of it all. Um, I think that the, okay, we're going to, let me get you right overhead so you can see well. I've turned my book sideways. I, I took I took my paper clip off. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. Okay, put that on so I know my, my front. It's always a good habit. You'll know it the minute you didn't do it. You'll be like, oh, I should have done that. Okay, so here we go. Now we're gonna align. We're gonna put our signatures. They're, they're butt flush here, okay? Y'all know what I mean by that, right? Butt flush? <laughs> it's kind of a funny expression, isn't it? But they're butted up against what would be a spine sitting completely perpendicular here. That's what I mean by butt flush. And um, they're they're inside the journal on the top and oh, can't see that. No, I'm going to move my, oh, okay. Let me move this. Yeah. There's a little bit of material here and there's a little bit of material here. So I know I'm in the center of my journal. Let me go up a little higher for you so you can see better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to make a mark. Of course I have it washy back here. Um, but I'm going to look straight down where the hole is. Get closer for you so you can see what's going on. Okay. This is a this is a hole and this is a hole. So I'm lining this hole with the edge of the paper and I'm drawing a little black mark up onto both um, spines. Doing that and I'm going to repeat that twice. Okay. So now I have my marks on my, my uh, inner pages. Okay. So now, now I'm going to cut the holes in my inner pages. Now you may have seen me do this a million times already. So if you've already seen this, um, this is just uh, if you want a refresher or um, this, is, this is how I do it. Um, back out a little bit so you can see. Okay. So decide which one you want first and second. So I'm going to take this one first. It's going to be in front. Okay, so I'm going to put it over here. This is the one in back. I'm going to do that one first. Okay. All right. I've opened it. Okay. Let's also do this. Let's denote our front. It's going to be like this. So we're not wondering. Don't need this giant paper clip here, but it's just, I, I have it. Um, turn it over. And I like to back fold a little bit on the fold. So that guides my Crocodile 2 Big Bite Puncher down right into the valley so I can punch easily over the dot. So I'm just going to go in here and do the same thing. Same size hole punch, a 1 8 and 2, and 3. You can measure these to make sure they're all equidistant. 
Um, there. I like to keep my two top ones a little closer together because I always remember top that way in case I forgot to do this. Okay, so I have that one, put it aside. And then we do this one, same thing. Find your middle. Okay. And put a paper clip on the front. Here's a paper clip. I have one handy. I do have more than one paper clip. Okay. Do the little back fold there. Okay. And then we're going to come on along. Do the punch, punch, punch. 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 There we go. Okay, so we have that one. So now let's put this one aside and we're gonna work with the one that goes in the back first. Okay, so let's grab a yarning or a darn needle or a big eyed needle because they're super easy to work with and they do fit through the hole nicely. Okay, and then let's get some. Um, and you could use anything here, what you like, but I think, I think, I think I'm either going to be working with green or cream with these journals just because and I think maybe maybe cream on this one. Okay, so three times the height of your pages. One, two, three. So I have two signatures, so I'm going to do this twice. One, two, three. You don't technically need to cut them off of your spool, but I think it's just easier to work with. And let's get one string. Do, 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 do. There we have one string. Okay. Now, okay, so this is our front because we have this on the front. Okay. Let's get our cover. That's our front because we have our flower and this is on the front. Now this is all, be careful it doesn't fall, fold this way. If you have lookalike fabric, you may want to put like a little, um, oh goodness, you know, like, something like this, like maybe like, okay, that's, that's my front. You know what I mean? Just something there. So you know that that's your front. And uh, so for example, if you have lookalike fabric, you know, ah, ah, which way, you know what I mean? It's going to really save you a lot of headache. Okay. So we have that. Now I'm going to work with the two r holes to the right or, or what I call the rear holes. And uh, I've got my, my twine. I've got my, um, my little big eyed needle for blind as a bat people that can totally easily thread this through the center first we're going to do three hole pamphlet stitch very easy stitch to do very but very versatile and very useful very strong and um, uh, a good one to know okay so in the back hole back middle okay double check back top okay back bottom Okay, and then back through the center again. Double check to make sure that you're going through the right holes and that you're in the back ones. Believe me, it happens you accidentally sometimes go through a front one and then you're, you're like, ah, hair on fire, hair on fire. Yeah, so you, if you get used to the habit of always double checking, you will be golden. Okay, make sure that your wings are equal in length, these strings, and make sure they go under the bridge. Okay, one wing on this side, one wing on this side. Pull snug, but not tight or tearing. So tight, but not tearing. And my wings are not equal. Let me let me even up my wing. Oh, okay, oh, there, there we go. Okay, snug, but not tearing. I, I, I always picture like a little angel coming and folding its, its wings. I know, I know. And uh, tie it once, left over right, right over, and then do the other one right over left. So this one is um, right over left. Yeah. Okay. And then I would do one the opposite way in case I, I made a mistake. <laughs> and then you can t t even throw in another one if you're not 100% sure. Okay. Because you, you do have extra. <laughs> and then maybe you want to leave these long until you decide whether you're going to tie things to them or you can cut them flush or you can cut them here or you can tie a bow. There's a million and one things, but I'm just going to show you basic construction today. Okay. So that is the first one. Now we can take this off and we're going to come along with our very fancy, highly useful bone folder. And we're going to train the paper. I'm going to do the fold, do the fold, and come back and, and just kind of reinforce doing the fold this way and that way. Okay. 
All right. That's already a very nice fat book, but I'm going to put more in there. I just want to put more. And, uh, oh no, don't, don't take that up. It's okay. Um, now I've got this one, same process, thread, needle, threaded, going through the center first, finding the center hole in front and through center, uh, not center, the top hole in front, top hole in the papers. Okay. How many papers you put in is totally up to you and, and the thickness of your papers. It's always hard to say to somebody, you know, use always 20 papers or 10 papers, but I would say 10 pages per signature. If you're going to heavily embellish, um, you can go 20, 25. If you're going to lightly embellish or no embellishing and you just want to do a writer's journal, which is purely uh, like an undecorated journal, no embellishments, no nothing, uh, or just rubber stamping or something like that. That's very flat. Okay. So now we have a wing of, um, discrepancy. So we will make our wings the same. Okay. Now pull tight, snug, but not tearing snug, but not tearing. Okay. Right over. I never know. I, okay. Just watch it. And then do it the other way. Do it the normal way and then do it the weird way. It just feels so weird the other way. Oh, and then the normal way. And let's just do one more for good measure. I'm like doing four now. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Pull along. Then our tails are down here, which is good can take that off and we have suddenly out of the blue created a journal out of out of fabric and chipboard and with no spine but it doesn't really need one because for some reason it just all works and um it's a really cool feeling it's got like a nice smoosh feeling to it now okay truth be told this journal will pop up a little bit okay i can't see it there but let me see if i can take it down oh no, i gotta unplug it okay i hope i don't accidentally okay it's gonna sit like that okay so the way that you can get around that if you don't want that but you do want a lot of pages make a wider spine and that will cause this to come down okay you can also put some weight on it and leave it alone for a while and eventually these papers will compress um, you can also tie the journal together in some way shape or form here like maybe punching some eyelet holes or doing a sash around the whole body of the journal and that will keep the journal closed so i like a good chubby little journal you know what i mean that's a nice little chubber and um so there you go i hope you had fun i hope you um uh here i'll put some here here we go you know this guy he makes a great paperweight there you go Ta. Problem solved. Um, it's not a problem. I, I like them chunky. Um, but there you go, folks. I hope you had fun. So that is a way to use. This is like thicker upholstery fabric, but it will work with other fabrics. Um, and um, I hope you had fun seeing that. So take care, everybody. Let me let me see. Find my little my little house mouse here. You want to say hello to everybody? No, you've been swimming, so you look really scraggly. Okay. So whoop. Sorry. Come here. He did go for a swim this morning in the pool. We're training him how to swim. Yeah, it's not my best look right now. I'm a little scraggly, but um, mom said I'd have a shower later to wash off all the chlorine, so that'd be good. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go to sleep now. Um, so anyway, thank you very much for hanging out. My videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Eastern time, 7 a.m. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. And um, uh, I have a Facebook group. Come and join the Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges. And I have a free monthly emailed newsletter. The link is down below in the description box. Um, you get a free digital image, a note from the bookmaker, a checklist of supplies, uh, junk journal tips, and updates from me at the Paper Outpost. And I have an Amazon shop. Uh, it's called the Paper Outpost. If you're looking for it and you can't find the link, just type in Amazon and Paper Outpost in Google and then click and you'll find the link. You just have a little snooze there, baby. Everything's fine. Okay, mom, I'll just, I'll just, I'll hold down. I'll, I am the paperweight. Yes, I will just stay here and snooze and I will make this journal flat. You just watch me. Okay, and um, you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And um, if you find value here, please like, subscribe, and share, and click the notification bell. And there was something I wanted to show you. Oh, it wasn't me? Yes, I always want to show you, but there was something else. Okay, I'll get off the book. Hold on. <laughs> All right, honey bun. You go back into your little soft bed. Okay. And where, where, where? Oh, there it is. Okay, so 
I thought this was kind of interesting. You know, I get a, um, one of my favorite things to collect are old black and white photos. And um, I just thought this was a riot because um, this seemed to be a theme back in the black and white photo era of whenever that was. But people used to apparently want to hold a prop while they're having their photos taken. So here is lovely uh, Sally Sue with her little kitty Lou. And then we have Mr. Pipe smoking man holding the baby. Yep, that probably wouldn't fly today, but uh, that's so funny how that was common back then. And uh, uh, here's the last kicker, man and giant fish. So, you know, apparently that was a thing that they all used to like to hold something uh, while they were taking <laughs> a picture. It just seemed to pop up that way when I was looking at a bunch of pictures. So um, I hope you guys had fun today. Have um, lots of fun crafting. Try different things. I really encourage you to try different ways of making journals. Um, there's a lot of really good instructors out there on uh, other, you know, YouTube and um, other places. So try everybody, learn from everybody, and then just have fun and make a lot of books. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.